There's a quiet war happening in your inbox right now that most content creators don't want to admit. They're competing directly with AI. And OpenAI just dropped the nuclear option for this. I'm talking about ChatGPT Pulse, a brand new proactive research assistant that goes and scours your chats and the web to come back with a curated list for you without you even having to ask. No more hunting for information, and most importantly, no more generic newsletters. And technically, with the right prompts, AI can write a better newsletter or a blog than 99% of the existing ones you already subscribe to. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what it is, how to use it, and most importantly, I'm actually gonna dive into the implications of Pulse and what could happen to the industry of content creation as a whole. Let's dive in. Now, ChatGPT Pulse has been released primarily to pro users on the mobile app itself. So you can't actually find it on desktop yet, but I would imagine they're gonna roll this out to something like ChatGPT Plus in the very near future. So what I did is I just screen recorded me going through the brand new feature right here as I received it this morning. So if I click on play right here, I'll just give you the play by play. You'll see here it goes through and then I click on next and then it goes through all the chats I've had. So if you've watched my last few videos, I was creating assets and YouTube descriptions for things like Claude code and creating prompts on mass. And you can see right there, if I go back just a little bit right here, it offers to connect to something like my Gmail or my calendar. And the idea here is eventually ChatGPT wants to be able to connect to all of the existing connectors or MCP servers to also proactively look at your calendar, look at your email and try to take the natural next step that things should happen. But for now, it's just Gmail and calendar. I would imagine this is already a bit of a security risk to be honest with you. So I wouldn't enable this from the get go, although it's interesting where they want to go with this. And as it keeps going, you can see here, it's the structure of something like medium, but a personalized medium. And it asks you whether or not you want to ask any tailored questions. And when you do that, if I just move my cursor here, if I say something like, I want to know more about prompt engineering or prompt optimization, it will add it as a topic to cover in tomorrow's edition of the pulse. Since you get a daily pulse, very similar to how you'd receive a daily newsletter. And you can see as it goes to the bottom, it's very curated. It walks through. If you open a specific article, it's designed as if O3 mini wrote it, where you have a mixture of tables and text, and you can click on this button that's called curate. And curate is where you can tell it exactly what you'd like. So imagine you had a newsletter wizard or a blog wizard where you can tell it, I always want to talk about these topics in this way, in this format, in this cadence. So you can see here, I said, I want to see more about AI agent design patterns in any then it said perfect. So now it's going to line it up and queue it up for tomorrow's edition of the insight. It's as if you have access to the direct editor of said newsletter or blog. So I'm actually hopping into my actual mobile phone using my Mac and you can see right here, it says today's pulse. You're all caught up for today. If you click on it, it takes you to that summary I just showed you. If we go back and we go to the left hand side, you'll see you can find it right here on Pulse. So when you go on there, you can see the prior pulses, but it's meant to only show you the prior day's insights. If you want to save a particular document, then you can just click on bookmark right here. And then if you like it, then it should give some form of a feedback loop to the algorithm in ChatGPT saying, Mark really like this particular article or this structure of this copy. So now that we're done with the demo, what are the implications of something like pulse? Is it a game changer as of today? Absolutely not. But what does it mean for the future evolution of this kind of product? Well, we started in 2023 and 2022 with having to manually send a prompt each and every single day. And then we created things like custom GPTs to stop us from having to send the same prompt. And then we had ChatGPT tasks where you could schedule a prompt to send you a ping for the following day or following hour where you can go in and it kind of created a pseudo newsletter experience. But the difference here is that in tasks, you had to still schedule the task and create the task yourself with pulse. Now it evolves to reading through your chats, looking through your preferences and proactively creating that curated blog or curated feed of your own. And where I think this is heading is eventually once AI video is inexpensive enough and good enough, we could have apps very similar to Reuters or the New York times or the economist where you'll be able to scroll through an entire curated feed for you specifically based on your search preferences, your prompts, everything you've done, and it will have indistinguishable from a current experience you have today. So with this said, what does this mean for implications? Well, I have a few of them that I came up with. One of them is pretty predictable, which is generic newsletters and the death of generic newsletters. 
especially the ones that are very AI generated, going through what happened last week with very little synthesis or digestion of that information. Even if you want a digestion and synthesis, if you have the proper prompt engineering, good copy in that prompting, you could also automate a lot of those different, more meaningful newsletters as well. And I personally subscribe to things like Medium, for example, where every day I get a highlight of different articles. And ironically, I got this one today, which is eight apps to use instead of doom scrolling on your phone. And what might happen is because we have this curated, tailored experience using something like Pulse, it now will lower your need to go outside and look for information because the information is gonna to come to you. And that's a good segue for this next point, which is information finding you instead of you finding information. Especially if you're looking for flights or you're comparing deals, you'll be able to proactively have a feed curated for exactly what you're looking for. So I imagine it's gonna use things like deep research and normal search behind the scenes to come back with a full curated list and maybe going through your memories as well as any form of system instructions to see how do I best position and craft this in a way that I know that someone like Mark would wanna consume it. And right now, whether you go on YouTube, your inbox, newsletters, blogs, etc., there's a lot of information out there. So one additional pro of a feature like this is it can curate a lot of the noise that's out there especially if you know what you care about, you might not care that, I don't know, Eleven Labs came up with something that sounds perfectly human, but you might care for a brand new model that's way better at copy for sales. If it knows that about you, again, you'll be able to curate that information diet, especially on the AI front where that diet is very bloated. Now, is a technology like this set to automate everything and take over everything? No, there are always going to be moats. And one of those moats, especially with the written word, is the power of a well thought out, very well experienced, tacit knowledge type of written document. And I, for one, that lives in a world of AI, I see all kinds of AI slop, and I do think increasingly, there will be even more appreciation for well-written prose by actual human beings. Because no matter how much you train an AI, you can get it to sound very human, and I've done that myself before with my team. But one thing that it sometimes can lack is that ingenuity, that new perspective that it's never seen before in its training data, and most importantly, the soul. And the second mode I see is around things like information, where there are things like newsletters around finding deals, where someone is an investor and has bought tons of, let's say, property in the past. So they know exactly what to look for in terms of properties in a certain area, how to teach you about, I don't know, private venture capital deals. So there will still be a lane or lanes where you'll have very specific knowledge that can only be acquired by the acquirer themselves, maybe because of their network, who they are, their net worth, or who they know. But the big picture here is that you can see the gradual evolution where we go from having to think about prompting to AI prompting itself, to AI prompting itself based on our preferences, and who knows where we might be in the next six to 12 months. And that's pretty much it. I just wanted to walk through this new feature because I do see some helpful and harmful possible implications for the industry as a whole, and hopefully it rolls out to plus users around the world so you can start playing with it right away. If you found that helpful or useful, then let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.